when you started creatively, what were you trying to do? When I, well, the first thing I think of is when I started creatively, I, when I was 16, I was like, should I be a dancer when I grow up or should I be a lawyer? And, um, and then I thought, which would be the, the, this is actually what I thought at the age of 16, like, which, like, how could I influence social justice more, like through dance or through law? right and, and I was like dance obviously because because <laughs> you can give people a visceral reaction when they see dance like it's, it's like they're experiencing the thing that the performer is experiencing and that I felt to me was a really strong connection through your journey through dance give us a rough outline as to where you came from up until more recently um, my parents did a lot of community theater and dance like where I grew up um, so I had a huge arts influence in my life growing up. I did occasionally do shows, I danced and did dance recitals, and I like, played piano and did all that. Um, and then I left Kenai and Nikiski, which is where I grew up, and moved to Anchorage for college and studied theater there, and did a lot of dance. Then I moved all over the States for a little while. I went from Anchorage to Chicago, and then I moved from Chicago back to Anchorage for about six months and then to San Francisco for a couple of years and then New Mexico and Pennsylvania and Montana. And then I landed here in Dublin about 14 years ago. And as a brief history of your projects, like mm -hmm. your big projects, the things that have sort of, sort of pinpoint and linchpinned, not just the successful projects, but the really, really ones that failed as well. Um, I think like a habit of mine that I've noticed, which is a like bad habit, is to put myself far from the center of things. Um, so like I do a lot of work not in Ireland, and then I do a lot of work like that's not in Dublin as well. And I think that is actually, I having analyzed myself, I think that that's like deep-seated discomfort with the institutions, which is silly in my case of the arts because like the institutions are there to support us. Um, but I think I have a deep skepticism or cynicism or distrust of a lot of institutions and that I've realized in the last like four or five years probably has influenced the shape my life has taken uh, in terms of what I produce and uh, where I produce it and what kind of things have you produced I well I produce capitalism the musical is my, my biggest work that I've ever made and I worked on that project for about six years and it is a big piece of acrobatic musical theater um, I wanted to mention the drinking from the well which is like a piece on pregnancy and uh, yeah, the transition to motherhood. So right now I am creating a show called This Was Never Going to Be Normal, which is going up in the Galway Theatre Festival in May, May 9th to the 11th. And it is in response to the climate crisis. And we're kind of looking at different uh, goddesses and like bringing them into the room and having them interpret mm. what can be done. Um, and I'm very excited about that. Could you tell us a bit about the musical? Mm. Capitalism the musical. I can indeed. Um, there are a few things, like the most, well, the one to describe it, it's acrobatic musical theatre. And so I used kind of standing partner acrobatics to kind of just re represent the hierarchy, like on a really simple visual level. Um, and I had three kind of three character groups and um, one is an emperor, emperor group one is like the fairy godmother group and the fairy godmothers were kind of like they'd be like the three witches or the muses or um, they were kind of functioning as narrators and also like stepping in and bumping the plot along so like I guess it's kind of a women's wisdom sort of sort of character group and they were quite uh, like vivacious I guess like they really had a lot of personality these women and then I had the superhero group um, their role was to function as a collective and so it was a little bit like surrealism or like a little a couple things happen in the plot of the play that are like outside of the bounds of normal so kind of fantastic realism sci-fi feel um, it kind of was a nod in many directions but mostly what it looked at I think it was like how hierarchical structures don't serve us and the power of being in a collective <laughs> Would you consider yourself an example of an artistic mother? I absolutely am an example of an artistic mother. <laughs> yep, I would absolutely say so. So when did you become a mother? What year was this? 2002 I became a mother. Yeah. Okay. So my older child is 16. Yeah. And so then, because just from what you've said about the projects that you've got and the themes they're about, mm -hmm. Do you find that there's some sort of 
world that you want to leave behind for your children? I certainly do. Hmm. There's a lot of discussion about, I guess, communal politics, yeah, communism, there's a lot of socialism, like this kind of thing is very much on people's mind within my social sphere as well as in my family. Um, so yeah, the kids are very aware of what's going on around them and very aware of the stakes, I guess, and they're also in a place of being like concerned about that and not, sure, not being sure what their, what their voice is going to be. Um, which is probably the state we're all in. Like right now, I think kids are forced into maturity or forced to bear this weight in a way that is really making them grow up faster. You know, like they don't have a choice to enjoy their childhood as much as we did. And before you had children, was your work focused on the future? Because you said that when you started college, you were deciding whether or not to be a dancer or whether or not to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. because you were still focused on the future back then. I suppose so. My parents would have been really political as well. Like, I mean, like I grew up certainly aware of like all of the politics within you know, within Alaska. Um, but also, like, I didn't have a real grasp of anything outside of what was happening in Alaska, which is like another big difference between what's happening now and what's happened. What happened when we were, of course, smaller. Um, like my, my kids know everything that's going on in the world. They know so much. Like the kind of my mid twenties, I sort of got myself together and grew up a little bit more. But before then, like I didn't, like I danced and I made work that maybe was new work. Like I was a new artist and like, so it, I, don't, I don't think it like satisfyingly answered the questions I was trying to ask of it. And um, now I find like my dialogue with my work, I guess is much more rich and interesting because I know how to, ask questions of of the context um, and that is has made me enjoy the process tremendously I'm happy with the way things have worked out and I think that mothering it just oh, you just it's just self-development in a way like in the self-development that is extremely tiring and difficult in the earlier times I don't get like it all, certainly has its challenges going through <laughs> But you just get to know a whole layer of yourself that would never otherwise exist. And I know other people who are mother figures within the world very beautifully, like, but not necessarily in a biological sense. Like you can mother without being a mother. Like you can influence the people around you and you can like feed them, maybe not your actual food, but maybe your actual food too. And um, just like let them, let them grow. Um, Jenny, my friend, is just like so wise and like so beautiful and just like such a give her, giver, um, but also like really clearly knowing and I really admire her for her ability to mind herself as well. Like uh, her relationship with herself is like one of the deepest and most beautiful I have ever seen. Like just her layers of self-reflection are, she knows herself so well and she knows her power and she knows... I, she knows her impact, which is, yeah, fair to say. I wrote an ode to her once. <laughs> <laughs> so she's been a big influence on me, and I think, yeah, coming back to community in Dublin, like, I think that women in Dublin are amazing. Like, I know so many amazing women in Dublin, like, and I think there is so much power there. One of the things that uh, we're talking about in the show, this was never going to be normal, is uh, looking at Athena specifically, because Athena is very interesting because she is like the goddess of strategy as far as military matters go in times of war, but also she's in charge of like the domestic sphere in times of peace. And I feel like women are we organize so much within our within the domestic sphere like we are the organ the chief organizers within the domestic sphere and then if you can just like i feel like if you could just like bump that out like one level um then like women's ability to organize is legendary i mean like the together for yes campaign was organized by women um and that was such a beautiful example of like lateral networking like there was a central point for sure and then, but there were so many groups of people working together for it. Like it was a really, really, really lovely, I found it to be a matriarchal structure. Like it's just like, it's like a great big hoop skirt. <laughs> like just big circles and like layers of thickness. And it was really um, inspiring to watch.
Have you any advice for a younger Deirdre? I would actually say, like, really make the effort to learn to love yourself sooner. And so give yourself the gift of, like, focusing in a little sooner. Um, yeah, radical self-acceptance is, like, a big thing. Like, people have a really hard time accepting themselves. And uh, if you're battling with yourself, like, what a waste of energy. Like, there's so many other more interesting things to battle with. Like, you're only one person, and there's, like, a rich tapestry of world out there. Like, accept yourself and, and move on with it. Like, the sooner you can get it out of the way, the deeper and richer your life is going to be. Because you're going to be able to pursue things that you want to pursue rather than like having to grapple with yourself. <laughs> <laughs>